Hello and welcome to The Daily Hope. My name is Jim Doyle. Let me begin with a baker. Now you probably know that the, most of the key elements in bread is yeast, water, flour, and salt. And then if we agree that unsalted bread is rather bland and conclude that salt is the greatest of these four ingredients, then we run into the problem of paying less attention to adding flour, yeast, and water. Likewise, love that is not balanced with faith and hope undermine the very definition of biblical love. While we wait for the return of, of Jesus Christ, we need faith, hope, and love in equal and increasing measure. In 1 Corinthians 13, 13, Paul writes, So now faith, hope, and love abide these three, um, but the greatest of these is love. And it leads some Christians to conclude that love is, is more important than faith and hope. This might not seem to be a problem unless, of course, these three attributes, faith, hope, and love, are designed by God to be mutually reinforcing, built in such a way that to diminish one um, of the three is to undermine the integrity of them all. Love, without the counterbalances of faith and hope, become unloving. In the context, faith is the trust in the work of the Spirit in and through our lives, since this verse and its passage is surrounded by text on the works of the spiritual gifts in and through our lives. You see, biblical faith, as it is used in this chapter, balances love by defining our objective, and that is to glorify God. You know, the same problem occurs when we consider hope. Hope is the perseverance of faith, um, the firm expectation that God who can be trusted will fulfill all that he promised. So now imagine a hopeless love. If our love for God has no expectations that all things will end up for God's um, glory and for our good, Romans 8.28 then love becomes a fickle, momentary thing, full of well wishes and, and general niceness. You see, while love is huge and powerful and eternal, it needs faith and hope to survive, to thrive on this side of heaven. In eternity, we will no longer need faith because we will finally and clearly see God as he really is, 1 Corinthians 13, 12. In the same way, we will no longer need hope because we will be in full possession of all that we have hoped for. We, have, we will have everything we could have hoped for because all that God promises will be accomplished. However, love will continue and grow ever stronger in eternity as Christians fully love their God forever. Hence, the greatest of these is love. But this truth about love, enduring power is glorious to experience, but not necessarily easy to practice. Loving our enemies our persecutors, our brothers and sisters who have wronged us it is difficult. Thankfully, we have the Spirit of God living in us to empower us to love. As we love each other, when, when, even when it's incredibly challenging, the Spirit helps us to in, invest in what is eternal. I don't know about you, but I want these qualities to be my life's most treasured investments, especially love. So for now, while we wait for the return of Jesus, we need faith, hope, and love in equal and increasing measure. We must allow each of those to, divine, uh, each to be defined biblically and to be counterbalanced by the other. We cannot allow misinterpretations of 1 Corinthians 13, 13 to tempt us to prioritize love to the destruction of all three. But we must also, by faith and hope, look forward to heaven fulfillment of all things when we finally have our heart's desire to love Christ fully and finally to all eternity. Loving God, please use the Holy Spirit to teach us how to love others as you do. I want to invest my life in others who will share eternally with you as I trust as I trust I will. Thank you for this powerful hope, Lord Jesus. Help me to make the future love um, we will share be, become a reality now. In Jesus' name, I ask all this in wisdom and grace. Amen. God bless your day.